RB Arm had a pop up. That sounds rude. Had a pop up shop. <laughs> Ooh, my missus. Um, Um... And welcome to the November 2023 episode of the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. My name's Leslie. This is a podcast about yarn, knitting, spinning, crochet, all the, the yarny stuff generally, uh, recorded on the south coast of the UK. I record throughout the month and then post on the last weekend of the month, sort of smush everything together, so I don't follow the standard pattern of one type of you know whips together or finished objects together anything like that just as I do stuff you'll see it because otherwise I'll forget that's the reality <laughs> it's called the not quite enough yarn podcast despite the fact I have lots of the stuff because I rarely have enough of the same colorway to make a single garment in one yarn and this is actually a good case in point so this is based on the floof sweater by Skandier Knits and I had quite a bit of cream double knitting weight yarn all these other colours they're all merino um, double knitting weight so I put them together and this is a, an example of what I do <laughs> it's also an example of what I do in that this is a sweater pattern and I made it into a cardigan so I quite often modify things as I go along as well so Thank you for being here. Whether you're new or returning, you are very welcome. It's lovely to have you here. And I hope everyone's well. Thanks for all the comments and thoughts um, that have been made on last month's podcast or on the weekly vlog. So I record short vlogs and post them on a Friday. And always lovely to hear from you. If you want to contact me on Ravelry, I am Knitting or Death. Or by email, I'm not quite enough yarn at gmail.com. So if you want to get in touch, please do so. November. Can't believe we're here already. And I have a little something to show you. A little finished spinning. So for the last couple of months, I've been spinning every day while I watch the vlog of Barbara from the Flame and Fibre podcast. She does a daily vlog, it's about sort of somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes on average and I use that time to spin and I'm finding that's working for me, doing a little bit every day um, to, to keep my hand in as it were. And I have to say I feel it's working because this is the most consistent yarn I've made I think and I'm very happy with it. So this is a classic three ply, it's come out at a double knitting weight yarn. It's fairly balanced actually, there's no kink in it. There's a couple of little overspun pieces but there's obviously a couple of underspun somewhere to make up for it. So this is some Superwash Polworth from Witchcrafty Lady in the Fall Colours colourway. So you can see we've got some low, it's coming up quite orangey on the camera screen. I don't know how it'll appear on, on the computer screen. But we've got pinks, we've got kind of bluey greys in here. We've got the more classic autumnal colours, the oranges and the browns. So a bit of everything. It was a, a braid of fibre, which I split three ways down its length. And then I spun three singles, starting each at the same end and then plied the three together, which is why we've got these kind of blocks of, of colour. So hopefully it'll be a bit of a colour change when I'm knitting it or crocheting with it. And I've got 158 metres of three ply yarn and it's coming out at about 13 wraps per inch, um, which according to my wraps per inch gauge makes it a double knitting weight yarn according to Ravelry makes it more of a sport weight it feels like a double knitting to me it actually feels quite soft um, 
a lot of my spinning the yarn gets quite hard I think I have too much tension in it whereas this it kind of felt about right so a finished skein and one that I'm very pleased with like I say fairly consistent not perfect I'm still a long way from perfect in anything I do and certainly in spinning but fairly consistent which I'll hopefully show you And I'm happy with how it's come out. So I look forward to putting this into something. I'm not sure what yet. That's the other thing with yarn and me. Um, don't always have a project for it. Just like the yarn. Isn't that how a lot of us work? Some people I know, they have to buy the pattern and the yarn at the same time and make that project. And that's fine. That works for them. That's grand. I, I'm not like that. I just like pretty things. I will be announcing further in the podcast the winners of the make along that was the craft for someone else make along and next month I will be doing what has become my annual December make along so that's just for the month of December there'll be a thread on Ravelry and the idea is just to hopefully give everyone who crafts a little opportunity every day to do some crafting December's a busy time of year, whether you're a Christmas celebrator or other uh, events, just life in the Western world, which I think most of us live in, um, very busy in December. So it's nice to take a few minutes each day and just sit down and do the things we enjoy. And as we're crafters, that'll be crafting. So the mall will be open to any yarny craft. So if you're knitting, crocheting, spinning, weaving, cross stitch, whatever it is you do, there'll be a thread on Ravelry. So you can just post a comment. It doesn't have to have a photograph with it. You know, it can say, oh, I made, I crocheted three rounds today or whatever it is. Um, you can put progress pictures up. Just put something onto the thread. And then at the end of, um, at the beginning of January rather, I will pull a couple of names out of that thread uh, one without a photograph will have a pattern prize and one with a photograph will have a, a, a yarn prize. Probably a yarn prize. Usually is. Um, so you don't have to finish anything. Like I say, it's more about making a conscious decision, if you can, and I realise it's not always possible, but making a conscious decision to take sort of 10 minutes out and do a little bit of crafting. Now, for folks with uh, yarny advent calendars, it may be your advent project that you're working on. It may be gifts that you're working on. You know, whatever it is, um, just take sort of 10 minutes out and then update the thread with how you're getting on and you'll be in the draw. So, so yes, finished object, hand spun, very happy. Cheers. Hello, lovelies a little finished object to show you and this is a cowl it's a birthday gift for a friend and it is the running uphill cowl by Kay the Archie who is Kay Smith she's called Kay the Archie because she's an archaeologist makes sense and as you can see it's a simple garter stitch cowl it's a free pattern on Ravelry uh, the initial pattern's designed for four ply or fingering weight and the original used, um, what have I got here, about 250 metres of four ply weight yarn on a 3.75 millimetre needle which is a, a US 5. I wanted to use this which is uh, Manus del Uruguay Silk Blend. I had two balls of this, they're 50 gram balls, so I had, um, how much is it a ball? Do you know what? I should be a professional for this, shouldn't I? Right, they're 137 metres per 50 grams, so I had plenty of yarn. Um, but actually, I used surprisingly little. So I went up a needle size. This is DK weight as opposed to fingering. So I went up to a 4.5 millimetre needle, which is a US 7. And I only used 123.5 metres, which I was surprised by. I had reduced the stitch count slightly 
um, because of using thicker yarn and needles. I went by the measurements on the pattern. So it's meant to be six inches wide and by taking nine stitches off, I got to six inches wide. That was largely guesswork, which largely worked. So we'll go with that. And I then just followed the pattern and kept working until it was the right sort of length. I was gonna go until I ran out of yarn, but it was getting a little bit too long. So I, uh, I decided to go with what I had and leave a little bit left over for my Christmas homemade advent. So. so as you can see, it's made up of wedges. This is done by very simple short rows, wrapping and turning, which on garter stitch works pretty well. Um, it's less obvious on garter stitch than it is on stocking stitch. And it's billed as a, a good pattern for a beginner because there's a little bit of interest, but it's not complicated. And it was certainly a fairly quick make. Um, and I've seen a few of these on Ravelry. Um, some people have done I-cord edgings. Uh, personally, I have an I... I always do the same edging, which I've talked about in the past. I always purl the last stitch of a row and slip the first stitch knitwise, which gives this nice sort of... There we go, a nice sort of straightforward, looks like a stocking stitch edge, but it's quite neat. Um, the version that Kay had put into the pattern did the same thing, but the other way around. So you slip the last stitch and knit the first one or something. I can't remember, but as long as you're happy with what you're getting, doesn't matter what you're doing. Also, people on Ravelry have used different yarns, obviously, and because of the wedges that you create you can create quite different effects so people with um, self-striping sock yarn for example have got quite strong stripes in here which highlight the shape of the pattern others have got long color change yarns um, which have then had a different effect so it's it's a fun thing to experiment with i was worried at first that this was a bit subtle because this is a sort of variegated yarn so it's very short colour changes and I thought that um, it wasn't really showing the pattern the, 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 you know the, the wedge pattern um, was all a bit kind of subtle but um, I think for the person it's going to that works better just because I would like it in neons doesn't mean that they would um, the other thing that was new on this for me is that it's the first time I've done a garter stitch graft, like a Kitchener or a Finchley graft, but in garter stitch. And I now can't find my graft, so I'm taking that to be a good sign. Or well, I think I might have found it. Mm, less of a good sign, but still acceptable. Um, so yes, I found that to be very easy. Got a I looked online. There is um, a video recommended in the pattern. I had a printed copy of the pattern, so I couldn't just click on the link. So I just went on YouTube and looked for a garter stitch graft. And I can't remember whose I saw, but there are several there. So you can find the one to, to suit you if it's something you need a bit of guidance on. So I'm very happy with that. I hope my friend will be. And it's a, a long cowl that you wrap around twice. And as it's silk blend yarn, it will be nice and cosy, hopefully. So I'm hoping that she'll like this. And uh, yeah, good fun knit, quite quick to make. Very adaptable pattern. And free, even better. <laughs> Cheers. Hello, lovelies. Got another little FO. And this is a little poncho that I made for my niece, great niece. Um, I used the classical attitude poncho pattern by Tina Sommer Hansen. This is a free pattern on the hobby website. The pattern is for the poncho only. So just kind of up to here, I added the hood. So, and I was thinking, you know, if she'd been to the beach or been swimming, 
and it suddenly got a bit chilly, a handy little throw over for her or plenty of space to run around, you know, if she's playing outside, not restricted by garments. So that was my thought process. I hope it's useful for her. Uh, the yarn used, I must just say, I was looking for poncho patterns and I thought classical attitude. I really know that name, but I look at patterns a lot. Um, so it's not unreasonable that I would know the name, but it just really kept in my head. That's because I've made one for myself out of pan spun when I had an alpaca fleece to play with. That would be why then. Obviously that was the adult version. This is the child's. And like I say, I added the hood. So yarn, yarn. The coloured yarn, the contrast yarn, is Yarwal Magic Degrade, which is very pretty. And I love the colours of this. But it's not the softest of yarn. Now, I haven't soaked or blocked this yet, so it may bloom. The yarn is 25% virgin wool, 25% nylon. It feels quite fine compared to other sock yarns, which with that sort of makeup you'd expect it to be. Um, like I said, very pretty. I'll see how it blocks. Uh, I did have some in a, a much sort of bolder colourway as well, which I made a broomstick crochet cowl out of. I'll stick a picture in here. Um, yeah, I mean, perfectly pleasant. Just maybe it's because it's soft colours. I feel it should be soft yarn. I mean, it's not at all scratchy. It's just a bit harder than I expected but it's fine it's fine and then the main colour in this the cream colour is Patterns UK fairy tale dream time four ply in the cream colour no in the white colourway sorry I've got some cream as well that's where I'm getting confused so I followed the pattern I started off just putting the eyelets in and then I thought well I started off with the colour and I was just going to do another border at the bottom and then I thought I know on the eyelet rows I'll use the contrast yarn to give a bit of interest and the other thing that's a modification is my usual crab stitch as an edging I have two edgings I either do a shell or I do crab stitch crab stitch being double crochet UK terms single crochet US terms but worked in the opposite direction to normal so if you're right-handed you would normally work clockwise if you work it anti-clockwise you get this nice ridged effect the hood I kind of made up I had a look at another pattern I'd made which was a, a little hooded jacket for my great niece and basically took the dimensions from that as to how to split the hood I mean you can just work up and then go across at the top and then you've got a pointed hood which is absolutely fine I wanted one that was more flat on top so that's what we've got here so I'm going to soak this now see how it does but very pleased with it. I think it's taken me a week, possibly less. Yeah, I started it 29th of October. It's now the 7th of, yeah, just over, just over a week. And rather pleased with it. Cheers. Quick update after soaking. Um, it's softened a little bit, not a huge amount. I only soak in water. I don't use sort of soak or eucalan or anything like that. I just soak in water to block. But um, but yeah, it's acceptably soft. <laughs> Cheers. Hello, lovelies. Now here's a rare thing: not to see me knitting, but to see me making something a bit like socks. I asked my sister-in-law for ideas of what she and the family might like for Christmas, and three years ago I made her some slipper socks and she said she'd like some more so here is a hoe this is the northern socks or slippers by Nikki Knits and it's a, a chunky weight um, not chunky uh, it's a thick weight I'm um, pattern I'm using fingering or four ply weight doubled and 
the pattern is for slippers or socks I'm making slipper socks as you do so I'm basically following the sock pattern but I will be putting some sock stop on the sole of the foot so that um, sister-in-law doesn't fall over hopefully the yarn on these the main yarn is fruitful fusion and it's their 80% superwash merino 20% nylon high twist and the contrast and I haven't done contrast heels I've just done contrast toes and cuffs and that's the Lang Yarvel that I used uh, for the contrast in my great niece's poncho so using that I think the colours go pretty well so I'm cracking on with these but I'm going to need my hands in a moment so I may not get much of these done while I'm recording this but as you can see I'm past the heel on the second sock so hopefully we'll have this finished which is just as well because we are reaching that stage and as they're a gift I don't want to run out of yarn so I'm hoping I can get to the end of the foot so that I can put in the contrast toe if the contrast comes in a couple of rows early I'm not going to worry too much and I'm guessing my sister-in-law won't worry too much either so that's good now I received this month a fabulous gift and part of this fabulous gift is for you lovelies as well so a big thank you to Barb Barb is a viewer hi Barb from Canada and in the past she's sent bags to me and that sort of thing very generous kind person last year I had the pleasure of meeting her she was on a trip to the UK and I met her in London and we went shopping so that was a lovely a lovely day just to be able to meet her and chat and that sort of thing and then I had a message a while ago saying um, there's a box on its way okay thank you very much and she remembered a conversation that I didn't remember <laughs> um, because she said last year I asked you about Advents and you replied you'd never bought one so I've made one for you along with a bag for you to keep and one to give away as well as progress keepers yours has your name on the back of the card the skein wrapped in blue is for the 25th just the most generous kind thing and has made me very excited more than I was expecting I, I kind of get the advent excitement but and with no disrespect to all dyers I've always thought that's an expensive way to buy yarn because the kits are very costly and I'm not suggesting they're not good value because the people putting them together are spending huge amounts of time planning their colours, dyeing their yarn, splitting their skeins, you know all those things they have to do so I do appreciate the time that goes into creating um, an advent for a, a yarn dyer but I've always thought no that's a little bit steep for me but this has just been my flabber is ghasted so we have these two bags I shall be keeping one one has snowflakes on the back one has stripes I think I'm going to keep the snowflakes actually this lovely tartan base to them and they're beautifully made bags they're fully lined drawstring gusseted bottom so they can stand up I mean they are absolutely stunningly made bags and Barb has a label which says bags from the bay I don't know that she offers these anywhere Barb if you do let me know please and I will promote the what's it out of you because they are so beautifully made so here's the bag that will be a prize and I'll be drawing the mal in a while the stitch markers put one in there yes I did so we've got these lovely beaded stitch markers so we've got a Christmas tree, we've got a fish, we've got a panda there we go so beautiful stitch markers these are the ones that are going into the prize and these are the ones for me 
me me me me so we've got a christmas one we've got a panda we've got a paw just beautiful and then in here we have an advent i'm just mind blown absolutely so all these little bundles and um barb has labeled so this one for example old oak yarns uh, it tells me what it is tells me what the colorway is called so a lot of um brands that i haven't used some i don't know at all but then things like hedgehog fibers i certainly know the name just blown away by this really am um and i've been very excitedly planning what to make i've had so many ideas as you can imagine i don't know what these colors are i mean i know i could look and go through on bob's um pro uh, project page but then that would kind of spoil the surprise a bit so i think i'm going to make a sweater and it's going to have thick stripes in it about 24 of them <laughs> so plans all in here swatching starting some of the prep but really looking forward to this uh, I had started to put together my own advent with a few bits of DK weight uh, to carry on with the like the paper chains that I was doing last year I may carry on with those if I have time but my priority knitting for December is going to be this and it's very exciting so Bob just a huge huge thank you to you I'm absolutely completely blown away by your kindness and your generosity thank you so much um, just amazing <sighs> it's so exciting the other advent I've got I have done a, an advent swap with megan in new zealand which is not yarny at all confectionery she and i have swapped um chocolate bars sweets what have you I, well no spoilers but i know that's what i put in the box that she's now got i forgot to send her christmas day present so i need to get that in the post pretty quick and i've got a box here of individually wrapped chocolate bar, well what look like chocolate bars so also very excited to try that now as i said last month i'm not doing vlogmas this month um just cutting myself a bit of slack really in terms of um daily uploads and just the time it can take i am going to do the weekly vlogs and the weekly vlogs will be like a, a vlogmas confirmation compilation rather uh, without the singing so <laughs> so um friend at knit night was saying this week can you please do some songs and no because my mate mandy will not be happy and that is not a woman i like to insult so, well, actually i do like to insult her a lot but it's not a woman i like to upset so <laughs> so vlogmas i will be recording every day but i'll be posting every friday as i do at the moment there are so many people doing vlogmases they are fun to watch it just is a time issue and Frankly, this year, I'd rather spend my time watching other people's vlogmases than editing mine and, and posting. So I'm going to do that once a week. I hope you are all OK with that. Some of you will probably be relieved. And um, yeah, we'll go with that. It's going to be a short one this month just because I haven't had as much knitting time as I would have liked. But I do have prizes to give away. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. And you have just seen part of the prize. So this is for the Make For Someone Else Mal. Mal? Mal? Yes, a little bit mulled, I suppose, but that's not what this is. Now, this is for the Make uh, Craft For Someone Else Mal. And we have a finished object prize to give away. And I'm actually going to give away two pattern prizes. And I'll do those first, I think. So one is a straight draw from the numbers. I use random.org, post numbers, two to seven, four, four, total um, 
length of the, the uh, make along. And the pattern prize, the first one goes to MAJMLJ, who is Melinda from Washington, who was comment number 288 and she was commenting on someone else's project. So thank you for taking part, Melinda. Congratulations on winning a pattern prize. And if you'd like to contact me either on Ravelry or email me um, not quite enough yarn at gmail.com, then I will get the pattern prize to you. So thank you and congratulations. Because I had been generously given items for the prize, I have decided to put in another pattern prize and a little bit I'm always hesitant to put in prizes for people who do the most you know put in lots of entries and that kind of thing because I think that's unfair on those who don't have time are slower in their crafting um, so I'd, I wouldn't do that on the finished objects but um, as I've been going through the posts on the threads I've been conscious of seeing the same names come up again and again and I had a quick look you can look at the threads on the voices part and it tells you who has put the most posts in and one person had put a lot of posts in commenting on others uh, very supportive very encouraging and I kept seeing their name and again again and again and they had put in more posts than anyone else by a country mile you know quite considerably more posts and that person I don't know their name I only know their Ravelry name which is bar 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 <laughs> uh, each of those bars is spelt B-A-A -A. so thank you so much bar 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 for being part of this and for the the sheer time and encouragement and enthusiasm you've put into this and I would like to say thank you by offering you a pattern prize as well so if you'd be kind enough to get hold of me either by email not quite enough yarn at gmail.com or on Ravelry and I'll get a pattern prize to you like I say I don't do that on the finished object because I think that's unfair because we don't all have the same amount of time the same uh, speed when we're working on our crafts and that kind of thing but I thought on the uh, comment thread the chatter thread it would be a fun thing just to say to the person who's chatted a lot more than other people thank you and so that's an extra little prize there so thank you to bar 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 so the finished object prize I have this lovely bag I have these beautiful stitch markers and I also have some minis so these are from Folkestone Harbour Yarn they are 75% superwash merino 25% nylon um, 10 grams each minis and this is the Firebird collection. So they're 42 and a half metres each. Folkestone is probably about three quarters of an hour to an hour away from me. So fairly local diet to me. And I just thought this was a lovely selection of colours. And you can see why it's been called Firebird. These are acid dyes, as we see with a lot of... Um, indie dyes produce these lovely vibrant beautiful colors but the dyer behind Folkestone Harbour Yarn and apologies because I can't remember the lady's name although I have met her once and what this dyer is also doing is natural dyeing and she is growing a selection of plants which can be used for natural dyes so I've included a few of the natural dyes as well so we've got four of these and you can see there is a different sort of quality to the colours both beautiful in different ways so we've got a mixed blue as variegated blue very pale green very pale 
black magenta it's called on this and then that same magenta but with a gold sort of color so this bundle of loveliness the bag the markers the minis again random number generator random.org and it picked out post number 408 who is dingle kringle who is mary ann from maryland who made a baby blanket which i will put here now this is going to seem like nepotism but i know mary ann because mary ann comes to barbara from flame and fibers monthly zoom meeting and also we'd been in contact prior to that because uh, she has a lovely grand dog called Pooter, who is beautiful and she now has a new puppy of her own called sky so that we had doggy chats <laughs> so i am so happy marianne that you have been selected i would have been happy with whoever had been selected but it's lovely to to know the person so that's absolutely grand um so Marianne, if you can just confirm your address to me, I probably got it, but I don't know if it's up to date. So if you can just confirm your address to me, I will get these in the post to you. We're heading towards the end of November. I can't guarantee you'll have them in time for Christmas, despite it being a, a gorgeous Christmas bag. But um, I will do my best to get this out to you ASAP. So, so thank you for taking part. Congratulations. And thank you to everyone who took part um i'm sorry i can't do a million prizes well that would be excessive but um, just delighted that so many people kind of got on board with it i do have an idea for a make along next year which i will announce in january well I'll probably announce at the end of december to start in january uh that will be a, another long term make along i'll probably run that till september but thank you all very much just and again thanks to barb for providing such a lovely part of these this prize it's just i'm so grateful thank you that is it for this month i said it'd probably be a shortish one um yes if you've been watching the vlogs the weekly vlogs you know i've been busy and i've been away and i've had family stuff so cracking on with that and of course the the dreaded christmas word is coming uh, i know not everyone celebrates christmas but there are a lot of holidays between kind of now and the middle of january so it may not be christmas you're celebrating it may be another festival depending on your faith or your culture um, so it's a busy time of year for a lot of people I hope that within all that busyness you are finding time to craft and as I said earlier the December mail will start on the 1st of December for any crafts you want to do just give yourself a bit of time to sit work with your needles your crochet whatever it is that uh, helps you get through the day hope everyone's keeping well um, I know that some people are going through some sort of tougher times at the moment so you have all my best wishes and all my hope for smooth processes good luck and support around you i'm going croaky sorry sorry i'm not getting emotional just going a bit croaky excuse me <coughs> arsenal um so just really wanted to say to everyone keep well thank you for being here don't forget to claim your prizes if you're one of the winners and look after yourselves i'll see you friday the first for the next vlog which will include the opening of the first day of the advent and i'll see you at the end of december uh, for the december podcast um I don't know that that will be over a weekend because of the way that Christmas falls this year. It will be probably in that period between Christmas and New Year, the old Twixtmas, when no one knows what's going on and no one knows what day their bins are being collected, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> so I will see you at the end of December for that. And I wish you all a very healthy, happy and safe month. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.